AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawksport Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Pro Air Federation, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport Pellets, Air Marksman Air Gun Accessories, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Holy moly, Tyler, you have been up, a Steve? busy, busy bee. You could say that, yes. <laughs> if you guys don't know Tyler, Tyler Patner is the product manager for Air Venturi, yep. among a lot of other things. And today he's going to get us through the brand new Air Venturi Avenge X, as well as two new compressors that they've got. So, T, the floor is yours. Sir. All right, What man. the heck so, have you been up to? So, to start with, the Avenge X is a modular platform. So I want to start there. And what I mean by modular is that you can change whatever you want pretty much on this gun, okay? So if we're starting with our classic synthetic. Can I can I just, and I promise I'm yeah, not going to yeah. interrupt you as we go here, but this is the Avenger that they know. They know the yeah, Avenger pop right. and the Avenger rifle. Right. Uh, $400 deal, right? The 350, yeah, 350. retail, yeah. Is this this? No. Mm -mm. That's what I want to do. Is, this is a whole new gun ground up. The reason we're calling it the Avenge X is because it does carry over some of those features, um, like your adjustable regulator, you know, you dual gauges, side lever action, of course. But the build of this gun is, there's no plastic on here other than the stock. Right? But it's a whole new gun from the ground up. Yes. This isn't a modified Yeah, Avenger. no, this is a completely new development for us. Yeah. Got it. We're clear. All right, yeah. sir. Sorry. Go ahead. So You're mo good. modular. And yeah. So uh, we're launching it with eight different versions. So you'll have the classic synthetic, and it comes in both a tube and a bottle platform. Uh, and then you have a classic wood stock, a bullpup, which is going to be uh, wood stocks only right now, and then a tactical version as well, which we'll, we'll, show, we'll okay. show you guys all that. Okay, stuff. okay. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to keep a lot of those common features that made the Avenger so popular in this gun. So adjustable regulator up to 3,000 psi. It is still a 4350 fill, so a you know, 300 bar fill. Um, but everything does so by way of a quick disconnect. So uh, bottle and tube versions alike both use a QD. So and the bottle uses a QD as well. Correct. Okay. Yeah, and we'll show you that. Um, right half inch UNF threads and there's actually a nice little adapter in here that has some baffle stack attached to it that does go around the end of the barrel to kind of center it and stabilize it. We know a lot of you guys uh, added a bunch of those aftermarket things for the Avenger so we wanted to build it in here as well. Um, so we're using that nicer, uh, higher density polymer that we used on the bullpup stock mm -hmm. compared to the Avenger stock. Um, but yeah, coming back, you have your dual gauges. So you have your fill pressure gauge and the gauge actually says fill pressure mm -hmm. uh, and the other gauge says regulator pressure. Okay. So you are uh, good to go there and obviously externally adjustable. That is your bleed screw. Okay. So all of the guns still have a bleed screw. It's located on the sides of the rifle. Um, and in this case, uh, you can't see it. Do you have a knife or something? I don't. Okay. But, so okay. this is the externally adjustable regulator down yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and there is a difference. Actually, let me grab one of these wood versions. We'll just kind of do a switcheroo here. Yep. And um, I have to ask a question yeah, while man. you're going. So you mentioned that. Will it have the externally adjustable hammer spring that the Avenger had? Yeah, we're just not there yet. Ah, okay. I'm, I'm working back. I'm All right, working sorry, back. Sorry. You're good. Sorry. All sorry. right. Um, so, okay. So your reg adjustment's right here. Now you notice, what do you notice about that? That looks different, doesn't it? It's a flathead it? screw. Right, but this is also silver, the other one's brass. So what we've actually done here is we've made the reg out of stainless steel. Um, it's handling the higher pressures better uh, and reducing reg creep significantly. Okay. Um, so there's, I've done this on about 20 guns with this new reg and it is like... Good luck could, with that, by the way. Yeah, look, reg creep is, is a reality regardless. Doesn't like, matter how much you spend, I haven't with. found yeah. anything that doesn't happen. They're not going to be perfect, but those... Uh, it, I remember we talked once uh, about the Avenger with reg creep, talking about what was acceptable and what was not. This, so far, in my testing, everything is acceptable. All right, like where you will leave this for a week, two weeks, and you might see a little movement. But in terms of one day to the next, nothing. So you're saying that red creep was important to you in the yes, event? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's there the were, product manager. Uh, the reality is there were a lot of things that were important to us when we decided to take this on. Um, and, and we wanted to address as many of the issues as we could. 
Um, because look, the Avenger is made to be an entry level. It's, it, it is your starting price point into a PCB. Uh, and it does so with a lot of high-end features, right? Which is why all of you guys out there love it. That's why you know it performs so well, uh, which is great, right? But how do you build on that? And, and so when we kind of went back to that drawing board, it was like, okay, here are the deficiency points if we wanted to address them, and I want to address them all. But it's going to be more money too. So of course, you, right. You spend more, you get more. Well, but here's the reality. This version, which would be really similar, so it's 210 cc air cylinder mm -hmm. compared to 180 cc mm -hmm. on the Avenger. This is 499 retail. All right. So 350 to 500. Right. So what you're getting here is, uh, in my opinion, light years better. Um, so as we work our way back, now that we've addressed the reg, mm -hmm. um, obviously you'll notice you're looking at the breech block, right? This is all one piece of aluminum. It's all solid metal. There is no plastic cover. The rails are permanently machined on. Uh, this is done from the ground up to be better, more robust, right? Yes. Um, so we've also added a transfer port adjustment. Now, one thing I remember talking to you about was the low power tune side of the Avenger. Yeah, right? it was hard getting the 22 cal to run below eight, 18 foot pounds, if I remember. Yeah, so this will do that with ease between your reg adjustment, your hammer spring adjustment, and this guy oh. choking off that that uh, transfer port in the barrel. Now you can get that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. And obviously it's going to... Of course. The barn tune. Yes, yeah, it's going to change a lot. Um, Good deal. So obviously coming back, same side lever system, but this is reversible. So you left these out there when we were thinking about you. Um, so you flip the gun over and you can actually see, so we have a cover here that'll come right off. It's a couple screws, pretty simple to do. Uh, you do need two flathead screwdrivers to do it, but um, achievable for most folks at home. And I fully expect you to show them how at some point oh, down the sure. road. Um, if if uh, you guys are just stumbling upon this video, um, I have a full review out on the Avenger rifle, as well as the Avenger bullpup, as well as a tuning guide on each one. Yeah. Take you through the gun, teach you how to tune it, and I would love to get that opportunity with the Avenger X2. That, too, is, that is the cool. plan. It's going to take you a little longer, though, because uh, so the transfer, or, sorry, so transfer board adjustment, safety, all that other stuff, yep. triggers adjustable. Um, the hammer spring adjustment is at the back of the action there. Okay. Um, you have a couple. You have a couple more turns uh, on the hammer spring adjustment than you did with the Avenger. Mm -hmm. um, so the synthetic here is adjustable cheek piece and the same kind of adjustable butt pad where you pull it and move it back and forth uh, as we had on the bullpup. This is a big up upgrade. This yeah. feels completely different. Yeah. Than, uh, than the Avenger side. Yeah, it's it's a low seven pound range. Mm -hmm. um, uh, most of the tube guns are in that that kind of ballpark. But um, it feels like solid. It feels more expensive. Is yeah. what I was going to say. Which it should, right? Yeah. It should because mm -hmm. it is. Um, so this is before we even get to the modularity of all this. Um, so you want to change calibers. That's something you couldn't do with an Avenger, right? Right. Um, you can do this very quickly. So it swap the barrel, swap the probe. Two screws right here, yep. pull the whole barrel and shroud off. Okay. And the way barrel kits are going to be coming is with the barrel and the shroud and your probe, of course, yes. How do you get the probe in there? So there's a hole in the probe. This gun is gonna ship with every size Allen key you need to touch any screw on the gun. Nice. That's not a screwdriver, so a flathead or a Phillips head so screw. Um, so yeah, it's there. just, Back that off a little bit, and then you can screw it out with your fingers. It's going to come out the front of the breech, and uh, you're good to go. What barrels, calibers will you be running the Avenge exit? So, 177, 22, and 25 to start. Uh, there probably won't be a 30, full disclosure. Um, the barrel on this gun is 22.8 inches. Uh, the intention is to have different barrel lengths down the road as well. So um, you want to do a little carbine guy, you want to do a long boy, like we're going to, you know, build this out so that you can do whatever you want. And we're also hoping to partner with some other companies as well to do different kinds of barrels. Nice. Yeah. Can I ask a question about that stainless steel regulator? Yeah. Uh, what's the operating range? Of it? So you're still looking at that like 12 to 1400 PSI in the low end kind of being that lowest point, uh, all the way up to 3000 PSI. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. And so this is the Avenge X Classic? Correct, this yeah. One? Um, now the cool thing about this, so we mentioned tube and bottle versions earlier. Yes. Um, is that you can swap. All you need to swap over to the bottle versions on any of these guns is a simple kit. Uh, in the cases of the, of the synthetic, this, the back half of the stock is actually the same. Mm -hmm. So it'll come as this front piece of the stock, your new barrel band, and your bottle. 
So the actual block that's on the gun doesn't need to change. Oh, I see. There's a divider. There. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this, uh, what I guess is commonly referred to as a drop block here, mm -hmm. um, does not change between the two systems, which is really nice. Uh, so there's no extra parts there. So hopefully we're going to, I don't have pricing on the changeover kits yet, but we're going to try and keep them as affordable as possible. Does one need to degas? Yes. The gun to change the... Um, so the bottles, you can actually put on or take off pressurized. Okay. And because there's a QD on the end of the bottle mm -hmm. as well, um, you can fill this up off the gun, no problem. It has a, a pin valve, so, you know, when you screw so it on, it like pierces. and standard you're good. Yep. CF bottle. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's all good. But when you, yeah, you do need to degas when you switch between the tube and the bottle. So, so they need a barrel band, I guess, obviously. That'll come with the kit. That yep. comes with the new bottle. Yep. And what was the CC difference? So uh, the tube is 210. This is 390. So uh, it's about 45% more volume, and it delivers about 45% more shots. And it runs at the same pressure? Yes, correct. 300 bar. Yep. I like it. This is nice and light. Yeah, it's, you know what the funny thing is, is because of the end pieces, you know, on the bottle, it's not actually lighter uh, than your tube version, but it's, it keeps the weight really similar. Guys with the big hands will like that. That's girthy. Yes. She's yes. girthy. There nice is a narrow down here. Yeah, there, She's girthy up there is another thing I, I should point out for the folks at home. So um, the, the rails on the bottom here, these Picatinny rails on yep. your classic stocks. Uh, these are metal rails, uh, yes. and the cool thing is, is we separated this from the barrel band. So this rail is actually screwed into the stock, and the way you get to the barrel band is in a through hole underneath if you want to take the action out of the stock. Okay. And uh, the price point of the, I imagine the bottle gun is going to be more than... Correct. Than yeah. The tube gun. So if you're looking at 499 here, I believe you're looking at about 729 on the bottle version. So it's about 220, 230. 230. Yeah, difference. Um, but what you're getting from a performance standpoint is pretty wild. So uh, I'll just use, so I tested all of this myself. Um, so when I'm telling you shot count, I'm telling you with real world pellets at real world speeds, okay? Um, you are looking at roughly 80 shots in 22 caliber with 18 grain JSPs at 32 foot pounds, like 880 to 900, um, 80 shots on the tube. You are looking at 180 on the bottom. Wow, so huge. Yeah. And the other benefit you get is it, it can be removed pressurized. So, you know, with 180, I don't think you need to stick a second one in your backpack, but you can certainly bring a couple up to the cabin for a long weekend and yeah. not have to log work. Long SCBA tanks, compressors, this kind of thing. Yep, so one 300 bar totally fill is going to get you a lot of shots. Uh, maybe in 25, right? That might be the place where somebody wants to do that. Mm -hmm. In 25, at, so like 25 fours at 880, so like right, right around 45 foot pounds or so, um, you were talking about it's just over 100 shots, like 105 or 110. I don't remember exactly. Big time shots. Yeah, a lot of shots. And from, but let's talk about power, okay? Okay. So that's what the gun kind of running in a sweet spot is what I would call it. So like 30 foot pounds. Most 22 cows are happy, you know, at 30 foot pounds. Uh, but you can take this all the way up to 50 foot pounds if you want to. So um, that would be pushing like the 25 4 monster redesigns. I want to say like high eights, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Um, so 50 foot pounds in 22, and all the way up to 60 foot pounds in 25. And That's then, at least as high as I've gone. So like slugs, uh, some of that stuff, you might be able to get more out. And the 177 and 22, if I wanted to sip it. I can run in that 12, 15 foot ton range. Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, nice. especially with that Love transfer port that. adjustment, mm -hmm. that opens up a whole new world of tuning possibilities for this gun. Wow, yeah. impressive. And uh, up here? Yeah, so half 20 threads. Um, so you may end up uh, taking off the whole end cap. Or you All right. Can... It'll, it's be, okay. it'll be a surprise unscrew. Yeah, you are. That's okay. We'll show them what's on the inside. So this is actually come apart, but. Oh. Yeah. So you have a baffle stack, and this actually captures the barrel um, on the other end. Nice. Yeah. So, so it centers it and you got keeps it. the shroud in the right place. Exactly. Good stuff. I like that. Is yeah. It, is it, how's the noise? Not bad, actually. When you get up there, you know, when you start to push this thing into the 50 foot-pounds in a 22 or 60 foot-pounds in a 25, like it, it snaps. But, you know, that's why we threaded the end of the shroud half 20. So if I want to add a, another moderator. Yep, you got it. Okay, so the modularity so far from hearing you is barrels, probes, bottles, stocks. Stocks. Yep. So yeah, these two are obviously quite simple because um, you're going, you're literally just changing a stock here if you want to go from wood to synthetic. But let's say you want to do a bolt up. Grab me one and yeah, we, we can each hold one. So 
Wow, I like that. So we've gone two different directions here with the bullpup configuration. Um, so obviously the one I'm holding is your tube version. This is gonna give you the shortest overall package. Uh, so you're looking at about 33 inches here. Um, and, and I believe it's like 36 or 37 on the bottle version. But why, go ahead. Why is it? Why is the barrel longer on the bottle? It's not. It's just set back differently. So oh, you'll notice yeah, I see this that. is actually more of a semi bullpup. I think you guys out there are really, this is my it's sleeper. It's like a hybrid. Yeah, this is a sleeper model, okay? Huh. Uh, this is one that I think a lot of people are going to like up because it's more compact and it pushes that cocking system in a more ergonomic position, right? So when you shoulder this, you're doing the same thing with the Avenger Puff, right? Where you're all the way back here. Right. Okay. But this. Oh, I yeah. gotcha. You're up here. Yeah, yeah. Not having to do this. Exactly, step. exactly. No. Okay. And again, also. Oh, this is the deal. If you're right-handed, <laughs> well, check this out though. Okay. <laughs> if you're, if you're right-handed with this model. Yeah, I see. You can switch it over to the left-hand side, never take your hand off the gun. Yeah, that'd be me. Yeah. I'd be doing that. Yeah. And it's all at your fingertips. That's the whole point of the platform, is that it's at your fingertips. You decide what you want to do. So will the bullpup cost more than the rifle? Yeah, a little bit. Um, so yeah, I think from an overall price range perspective, you were looking at, like, so I said $4.99 for that synthetic tube. Uh, I want to say like $7.59.99 for some reason is sticking in my head. If you want, actually, I will send you um, the price breakdown. So if you want, as we're showing them on screen, you can show what the, yeah, like for the sure. retail price is. Is that an adjustable comb? It is. is. That, that yes, is? sir. Yeah. So you do get that up and down cheek piece adjustment. And one thing you'll notice is we, you know, the big concern here is when you start to do stuff like this, where you're changing stock styles, mm -hmm. is that, oh, I'm going to lose the ability to touch my adjustments. Well, no, like we wanted, to, we hogged that out in there so that you could still get to that hammer spring adjustment. Yeah, so where are my adjustments in the bullpup? Right. And so, in the hybrid. Great question. Great question. <laughs> All right. So, uh, for your full bullpup tube version, mm -hmm. your reg adjustment right here. All right. So, there's actually a through hole. If you got a long uh, screwdriver, you could do that, or you can just reach in there and get to that, no problem. Uh, for your hammer spring, you are still at the back of the action with okay. a nice little hole. Yep. And then obviously the transfer port's always going to be unaffected. And the degas? Uh, is going to be over here on the left-hand side. Okay. Man, she's taking a beating. Yeah, someone oh. has not been so, kind to that mm, one. Sad panda. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on this one, actually, the reg adjustment is right behind the trigger. Okay. So again, you just get right in there, no problem. Uh, and then your hammer spring adjustment, if y'all can see that on camera, is right in there. You're going to be able to take the included Allen key, wedge it in there and make your adjustments, and then transfer port there, and your degas screw right there. Got it. So I have a trigger question. Fire away. I loved the trigger on the Avenger. Yes. Is this a similar trigger to that? Yes. Except all the parts are metal. There's no plastic. Hi, so it's better. It's an upgrade. A little bit. Yeah, the fit and finish is a little bit better. Um, actually, I'll tell you a funny story. You and I were talking about the Avenger bullpup. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember this. I said something to you. I was like, oh, well, if you take the trigger pack, if you look at the back, the rear trigger pack, there's some washers on a screw. Yeah, I remember that. All right. I was talking about this and I forgot. <laughs> okay. So I almost let this slip. <laughs> okay. Oops. Uh, it happens. Um, but yeah, so you can actually make this trigger, in my opinion, nicer, cleaner, crisper um, than the Avenger trigger. Um, but the trigger unit in itself is the same. Yeah, outside of the metal parts versus some of the plastic parts. Yeah. I can't wait to tune one of these. This is a ton of gun for it between is. 500 and 730. If yeah, I'm here, you know, anyway. honestly, when we were talking about pricing it, we started looking at, at what made sense and, and what else is in the market, right? I've done breakdown comparisons of the performance of this gun from a shot count standpoint mm -hmm. and power output, you know, and all of those things uh, to pretty much everything else on the market that's double the price mm -hmm. or under. Yeah, I was, just, I was just thinking you're gonna freak a lot of people out with this because yeah. as terrific as the Avenger was for 350, I mean, for another 150 bones, you're into this. Yeah, and and, and that I, is a no-brainer. Yeah. And you're you're talking, you know, for, still for the bullpup, you're going to be in the six range, you know, for the for the two bullpup. So, you know, if you want that really short package, um, and again, like the, the cool thing about this platform, mm -hmm. um, one thing I can't show you here at the show because I don't have Allen keys and stuff with me. Mm -hmm. um, when you swap calibers, the shroud locates into the breech block and it's pre-assembled, right, with the barrel. Hmm. So you don't have to do any work, right? Like, you don't have so to line easy. anything up. It's just lock it in, make sure the little pin is in the hole, and you are good. What about for just 
barrel cleaning if the guys want to. Oh, take sure. It apart you want to pull the barrel? No problem. It's two screws on the top. You just pull the whole shroud okay. out. Yep. And I love that this is all aluminum now. Yeah, all one piece. Yeah, and uh, the, yeah, and these don't screw in after the fact. Exactly. Yeah, and that was you know look. It, it wasn't a problem for me, yeah. but I mean, this is a nice upgrade. Yeah, and I, and I won't tell you that we haven't experienced some guns that have problems with that setup. Good but don't. it happens. That's <laughs> 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 It's all right. This is the reality. So, um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of gun here for the money. Let, let's show them the tactics. Yeah, for sure. You saw me eyeballing those. There you go, sir. Yeah, love that. This is so slender. That's crazy how yeah. slender that is. So, uh, the the. Oh. The tactical version actually represents the lightest version of both guns. Um, all metal commercial buffer thank, tube. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for giving <laughs> us a metal buffer tube. Um, it does. I will say this to all of you out there that uh, like all the cool. I, well, I don't want to say this isn't cool, but um, this doesn't attach to the back of the action the same way a traditional buffer tube does. Mm -hmm. um, so while it does, it is a traditional buffer tube. It actually is keyed on the inside to lock in. Mm and does not screw in, which means you're not going to be able to adapt like the folding stock to it. Um, some of those other things, like I, I've seen some of these guys with different types of butt stocks that will go onto the AR platform but don't use a buffer tube, those won't work on this. Um, but okay. if you want to take the stock off that comes with it and run whatever your choice of butt stock is, of course that's going to be at your fingertips. Grips, completely removable. You know, you if you prefer to shoot with a, a thumb up position, you can throw that Saber Tactical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I was just looking at the how vertical the grip was oh, compared sure. to everything else. Yeah, it is. It is more vertical. It's tacky. Um, and we, we kind of we took some measurements on a lot of AR grips. We kind of went with a middling route in terms of the size of this grip. Mm -hmm. it, it does have a bit more of a blocky feel, and part of that is because this I like this. Like I shoot with my thumb up. Yep. Most of the time, mm -hmm. so I like more feel on the front of that mm -hmm. grip. Um, but if you don't, you can take it off and put whatever you like on it. Alloy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, Sorry. If, no, you're fine. <laughs> it, it, Squirrel. It, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, the, the, the stock you're holding, for what it's worth, is 3D printed. Um, but oh. the, the, obviously, it's going to be that nice uh, higher end like polymer, the, like, this like the synthetics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you have a full metal Picatinny rail at the front of both guns. Um, I like how it's integrated, too, like yeah. right into it. Yeah, it keeps it nice and in line. Holy moly. Yep. And this barrel band is no joke. Yeah, so that's another thing. All, substan um, all of them are substantial. So, so with the barrel bands, actually, we, we're giving the user the option um, to free float the shroud and the bottle if they want. Now, the bottle and the tube, the tube fits a little differently. It's a little tighter. Mm -hmm. The bottle has some play in there, um, but there's a little... It's not an O-ring, but there's like an insert inside of there you could remove if you wanted to. Mm. And there's also an O-ring in the shroud end that you can remove if you want to float the whole system. Mm. So um, that's something I've seen other manufacturers do that I, that I said, like, this is a great thing to have because, you know, if I'm somebody that's walking through the woods, you know, I have an O-ring as a little bit of a buffer there. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to knock anything out of alignment. But if you're a target shooter, right, you probably want to float it. And you can, well, I was going to say, you can also use that as a tuning tool. Sure. You know, sure. you're going to find a tune and the gun's going to either like it with that or yep. without it, yep. depending on that node, as they call them. Absolutely. Harmonics. Yeah. Holy moly, buddy. This is, um, this is the this Avengers. Is pretty damn impressive. Yeah, man. This is, uh, yeah, we're, we're really, uh, really excited about this one. And uh, I think it's going to do well. You know, if you're looking, part of, part of what I noticed looking at the market, you have a lot of guns now, mm -hmm. you know, in that three to four hundred dollar range, which is great. It's a great entry level point. But heck, think about a five hundred dollar to seven hundred, eight hundred dollar gun in the market since the Marauder. There have been a few, but you can't really pick one out as like, wow, this is great. I well, think this is going to fill that gap. It will, and and you know, eventually most of us get to that place where we're like, okay, I like this, I'm into it. I'm going to do it for for a lot longer, and I'm ready to to to, uh, to step up. Yeah, this is your upgrade, right? Like this is, if you, if you watch some of what's happening in the lower end gun space and you're saying, eh, some of this isn't quite for me, I want something a little bit better, but you're not seeing the same features mm -hmm. in that five to thousand range even, welcome home, well, we got you. Well, they're wondering, buddy, a big question, when? So, uh, June, July, yeah, so, so like summer. middle of the year. Yep. Nice. Warranty year? Uh, we're still up in the air. It'll be at least a year, but we're still back and forth on that one. I'm right. pushing for longer, but we'll see. All right, so summer of 2023. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. 
And and just in case, uh, I don't know if I said this or not. The intention is to have different. I think I said about the barrels, right? The the intent is to have different barrel lengths and things of that nature. Um, but you know that may certainly extend itself into bottles and tubes. You know to do carbine action type stuff. Um, but that's also not outside the realm of stocks also. So we, you know, we don't intend to necessarily stop here in terms of the styles and configurations. Yeah, this um, is just the beginning. Yes, yes. Um, thank you for the nice view here. Oh, oh sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a little different than the Avenger gauges. It's bigger. For what it were. Well, yeah, but it's also labeled a little differently, so um, it, it should be easier for everybody to read. That was the, What's with the little blue on the bottom? Uh, just so there's color-coded regulators, blue, pill pressure's red. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, well, that's a lot of the questions in the tuning guides. Yes. Is the gauges like, look the same, but have different coating yeah. on them. You know. They're like, how come, uh, how come my regulator is moving all over? Because they're looking at the PSI Wrong side. Gauge. And how come my regulator doesn't move? Yeah, it's going to be hard when the thing says regulator on it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I mean, really, you're helping a lot of people because those guys were very sincere in their questions. It was just Absolutely. confusing, especially to somebody brand, brand new at this. Yeah. Well, this is just next level, bro. I'm really impressed. Thank you so Thanks, much for sharing it with me and these guys. Absolutely. And, um, Hope you like it. Oh, what's not to like? We have two new compressors. Yeah, let's go check them out. So we're going to break it down and we'll set up uh, set up over there. Cool. Okay, Tyler, I see something that looks familiar. A little different. So oh. you haven't seen the Nomad 3 yet. That's the 3. This dropped a couple months ago. And uh, these guys are new. Correct, yeah. These two are brand new for shop. Okay. Um, so the, the Nomad 3 obviously was like kind of the, the building culmination of what we've done with the one and the two, and you saw the two, and very similar system to the two. I've reviewed the two. If you guys yes. want to see a review, fill guide, maintenance guide, all that, inventory yeah. two. And just the only difference between the two really and the, and the three is that this is a hell of a lot faster. Um, oh. So we were able to make some changes internally to, to get those fill speeds up. Okay. Um, and also to streamline the internal system, which was a nice thing, I mean, for sure. And cut a lot of the maintenance out. So all that like bleeding the lube thing and all that, yeah. no more. So simpler, faster. Yeah, exactly. So. Then this guy came on the scene. The Robert and the, crypt, the Krypton. Yes, so the, the Robert, we'll start there. Okay. Um, so the Robert is like uh, fast fills without the frills, you know? Like So this is comes with a nice bag and you got the lights and all the fun stuff. Okay. This doesn't have any of that. So is this less money than that? Heck yeah, so, so we've uh, been listening. Um, okay. We know you guys want that lower price point compressor. Uh, so this guy comes in at just $4.99. And what's this? What's this one now? Eight forty-nine, seven ninety-nine retail somewhere in there. Um, here's the kicker, okay? Still no maintenance and the same fill times. Okay. So <laughs> you're, you're at you're, you're you're saying to yourself. This is like, the Y emoji. Ooh. Right, right. Well, the whole thing is like this is the future. This is what's ah, coming. Yeah? Okay, gotcha. Um, so you still have you know the same filter output hose, everything QDs everywhere. Twelve volt, one hundred and ten volt. You got it. A little bit different system. So we do still have uh, you know your your plug in for your uh, battery clamps, right? Um, but on the top, instead of having a little bit less or well more complicated system, this is a dual switch. So all you have to do, you want to run it off a 12 volt, bam, you flip it over to 12 volt, and you can start going once you're connected, obviously, to your battery. Uh, you want to run it on 110 or 220, depending on how you're set up. You flip it over the other way, and you're good to go. Right. Right? If Very you're simple. scratching your head, and I'm sure 99% of them are not, but that 12 volt's all about being able to charge your air gun in the field yep. from your automobile. You got it. Yep. So if you need it out there in the field, you know, and maybe you don't have a tank with you, you don't want a hand pump, if none of that interests you, this is a great solution. And we're not talking cigarette lighter, yes. because that's low amperage, we're talking alligator clamps on the battery. Correct. With the car running is uh, the way with to do that. You don't want to kill your battery. Yes. Yes. Um, but this is a much more simplified system, so you still have your auto adjust, you know, your auto shut off with yeah. the adjustable great. pressure. Great. Um, but all you're doing is selecting, that's going to, and, and here's the cool thing, if you don't have your power cord plugged in, all right, let's say you want to run it on, on 12 volt battery and you flip to the wrong side accidentally, yeah. nothing's going to happen, all right, it just does nothing. So it's kind of like a stupid so, switch. Yeah, it's a, yeah, perfect. Yes, so once you have that set up, you hear everything come to life and then you can go ahead, you just press start and it goes until it shuts itself it just off. just stops where you set it. Yep, you got it. Um, and then your bleeder and everything, right over here, you got a dual fan system. So this thing runs cooler even than the Nomad 3 does. All right, so they're all wondering it because they all ask it all the time. Sure, yeah. Can you fill an SCBA tank? Something like We're that. not going to rate it for that. 
Okay. <laughs> um, there is still kind There's of, your answer. Yeah, there is still that hard rule for us anyway. Yeah. Um, 15 minute fill times. So if you have to run it for longer than 15 minutes, stop, let the unit cool, leave the line. What, 30, 30 minute cool time? 30 minutes, no, 15, I, 30, I think 15. It's, it's more like 15, 10, 10 or 15. Okay. But that, that's what I use anyway. Yeah. You know, your, your Fill at bigger. your own risk. Yes, yeah. But I, I really wouldn't recommend doing a bigger thing than one shot. Air cooled, air cooled. Correct. You got it. Yep. So that is the Rove Air. Um, obviously, this is the price point. For so you said five and seven fifty. Is that right? Other way around. So yeah, five hundred dollars retail. Seven fifty. I think it's like probably eight. Probably eight. Closer to eight. eight. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so the Krypton. Yes. The big boy. Yeah. Um, Planet Krypton. Yes. Uh, we have. It's a noble gas actually. Ton Jones gave me the name. Ton. Thank you, Ton. I have a two o'clock appointment with Ton. Actually. There you go. Well, you can thank him for it. Get into some Air Force and some RAW. Um, so our big AV compressor, you know, it's been out for uh, five, six, seven years, something yeah. like that. 2017, I think, is when mm -hmm. we came out with it. And we really hadn't changed very much about the unit over time um, because it's a robust unit. It's made to fill tanks, but that price crept up with, you know, shipping and all that stuff through COVID and all, all the madness. You know, where were we on that one? Uh, current retail or when they sold through, I guess, uh, $16.99. Okay. Yeah, and I think we introduced it back when at like $13.99 or $12.99. So, okay. you know, that, that, that that's the reality of the economy yeah, today. Right. Uh, but things are starting to come back down a little bit, okay. so we're able to maneuver. Um, so you are coming in at fifteen ninety nine. Nice. And this is your bottle filling compressor. So not only uh, have we made this unit faster as well, and some of the parts are more robust. This weighs about ten more pounds than the original. Do you want does. to pick it up and show it to him? No, them? I don't. My back. <laughs> <laughs> I can, but I don't want to. Right. Um, but you're looking at a, a much more robust internal system. Okay. Uh, so we beefed up the parts that needed beefed up, mm -hmm. um, and on top of that, we made it fifteen percent faster as well. So you. Can fill a seven, 74 cubic foot tank, or uh, I think for the folks home, maybe a 6.8 liter for those of you in Europe, um, in under 50 minutes. And the max fill pressure for all of these is 45. what? 4,500 PSI. Yep, you got it. What's that in bar for our European friends? 309, 310, depending on how you, your map translates. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so still auto shut off, adjustable, you know, wherever you need it. So if you want to fill an aluminum tank or whatever, you go to 3,000, 3,200, you can adjust it, it stops when it's done. Um, but so 15% faster, but we've also added some improved filtration. Desiccant. Yes, so this is actually a well used filter. Uh, we're recommending them change every 20 to 30 hours, I believe, uh, is what, what, I, what we wrote in the manual. Yeah? But, yeah, man, go for it. So you have activated charcoal here, which is going to take out any of that, that oil smell you might get mm. through the unit. It, it's not a bad thing, it just it, some people get wigged out about the smell. Mm. I get it. Um, air should be odorless. There you go. Unless there's something in it that should, you know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Unless you're eating here in Las Vegas. Yes, yeah, that's true. Um, and then, yeah, you have your desiccants up in that top half. So, How much are these? Uh, they're probably going to be about 30, 40 bucks, something like that. And But they're going to last you for, you know, 20 or 30 hours. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. a lot better in terms of what the output of this unit is than the cotton filters that were included in the previous version. Is they this, do the job. This sorry. Is, you're good. So this is better than the cotton? Yes. 40, 40, 40, 45 bucks? Probably 40? under that, probably like 29 or 39 a.m. Uh, liquid cooled? Yes, so you do have a water cooled system. Uh, there is a fan in there somewhere too, but yeah, it's water is doing 99% of the work. You can throw your own coolant in there if you want. Um, like I know a lot of guys are using Royal Purple and some of that stuff. Yeah. Um, you just want to pay close attention to your hoses, uh, the, the water hoses, the circulating hoses, uh, just so that that doesn't eat away at them or anything like that. Because if you let it sit for a long period of time, sometimes not such a great So thing. the water wetters can be tough on the system, if I'm hearing you right. Yeah, um, sometimes. You know, it depends on your environment. If you leave it for long periods, like if you fill your tank once a month, you don't need it. Just leave it with water. Um, you know, and then don't use tap water. Use, uh, you know, just distilled water is usually a little bit better. In terms of the hose integrity, there's no functional difference, but like you get some of the things that they put in your tap, you know, for drinking, um, end up building up in there over time, especially again if you let the unit sit. Um, you know, do the things you need to do over the winter. Treat this uh, very similarly to how you would a lot of your other motorized things that you might keep in your garage if you're in a colder weather climate. Well, when for 
the row of air in the Krypton? Uh, looking at the end of April, early May. Spring, yep. for, for both of them? Yep. Is it the same company that built this that, that yes. you're working with for these guys? Yep. Yeah, so this is this has been a continuous improvement project because a lot of this is dead up the same as what we had. Um, it's just kind of the nature of the economy right now and shipping prices coming back down finally that we can reduce the price and also build in some more features. To it. Is it the same for the Avengex? Your manufacturing partner is yes. the same as for the Avenger? Yes, not the same as this. But right, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. cool. Well, yep. Wow, super slick. Yeah. So. You know, if you're still in need of air filling supplies after all this time that, uh, you know, all this stuff's been available, we got you covered. For the newbies out there, I think this is going to be a, a killer deal. Yeah, you're, in, you're upgrading. I like it. Yeah. I'd like yeah. to see you guys Continual not not getting improvement. stale yes. with, uh, with the way things have been. Yeah. Cool. Trying anything. Anyway. Trying. Tyler, amazing. Thanks, Mark. Seriously amazing. You've been really product manager for Air Ventura. You guys are wondering, the, you know, about that the brains behind... Oh. The decisions and That's the testing good. and the tuning and just all that behind the scenes behind that Avenger and Avengex and this stuff. This is your guy. And if you want to see him on YouTube, where uh, can they find you? Hit us up, uh, Pyramid Air on YouTube. Uh, do all the videos over there as well. So, yeah. And any of your retail needs, you come see us there. It's a great product yeah. reviewer, too. Okay. Thanks, man. Thank Wish you well at the show. Thanks. Thanks Likewise. For, appreciate it. Thanks for giving them so much of your time. Hey, happy to do it.